Pastor Bingham. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having us here. Honored, my brother. Our Hope Community Church. Honored. Here Honored. on the near southeast side. Yes. And we've known each other for 13 years. Yes, we have. And I've enjoyed our talks, and you've been on my heart, brother. And Thank I know you. these last two weeks have been, I mean, just would love for you to unpack a little bit the images as they scrolled across all our phones, you know, when George Floyd's arrest and all that happened and then his eventual passing and yes. um, just thought about yes. when you first saw that, Jesse, when you first saw that, talk about, help us understand what was going, going on inside of you. You know, when I first saw that, I was, uh, I was very angry really very angry because I was like, uh, you know, here we go again. You know, it's 2020 and, you know, this is still where we're at uh, here today. I was uh, very angry. I was, I was appalled. Uh, I was f offended. I felt disrespected. I felt uh, discriminated against. Uh, I felt that... Um, uh, what's been shown time and time again over over years of oppression that uh, 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 some people in society think that a black man's worth is is zero that he doesn't have any mm. value. Mm. Uh, I didn't say feel that particular way about myself because I know who I am and I'm comfortable in my who I am. But just society's view of us, I was very angry, uh, Pastor. I. Um, I was angry about a whole lot of things on a whole lot of different levels. Yeah, talk about where your anger was directed towards, because I think that might help us understand like the layers to it. And and and, that, and that's a good way to put it because it was many layers. Um, definitely uh, with the police officer and how he was just so callous, mm. having his hand in his pocket, you know, just sitting in there casual and cavalier, you know, like he was Captain Morgan or something, you mm. know, and uh, just putting pressure on uh, Brother Floyd's neck, and then you got the other officers just standing around. Uh, I know some of them, some other videos that came out showed some of the officers trying to do crowd control, but it really bothered me too that they stood around and didn't do anything. Mm. Uh, and as other videos have surfaced, you know, um, uh, two minutes and 47 seconds uh, left on the taping, uh, the man didn't even have a pulse, but he still stayed there on his neck. That he was already dead. That was callous. It was like, you know, wouldn't it have been a beautiful narrative if one of the police officers that were standing there witnessing would have just arrested him right there? Mm. Arrested that officer right there? Mm. That bothered me. Another thing that bothered me was that uh, uh, that day I had to role play again with my loving, beautiful 19 year old son on how to react and conduct itself during a traffic stop all over again. So I mean, wait, this so is- Wait a minute, Jess. So you're saying you've, you've done this before. Absolutely. With your 19 year old son. Yes, you had I to have. have. The conversation reset. What's that, how does that conversation go? You know, he, you know, he's a typical kid, loving, but you know, he was uh, uh, reluctant to do it. Didn't want to do it. I said, well, you're just gonna have to entertain me because I need to make sure that you still remember mm. how to do it. And we, we role played, you know, I was the cop, you know, he was the driver. You know, what do you do when they pull you over? What did you do when uh, they asked you to pull out your license? And, and he was right on point, you know, play by play. What did you do if they asked you to get out of the car? We told him how his body, how to, uh, how his body language should be, uh, how he should uh, look him in the eye and mm. how he should be uh, yes sir, uh, no sir. Uh, you know, don't roll your eyes, don't smirk at them, even if they talking crazy to you. But I told them, I don't never want you to give them any reason uh, to cause you any harm. Mm. I said, I want you to act like I'm telling you act so that you can come home. I said, so, I so want you to be able to come So the anger, Jesse, was the fact that you had to have that again. That's what you're yes, saying, that right? was, you're that, like, was, that was a layer. Like, yes, that, that was. I gotta that have was, this conversation again. Uh, again, uh, with with my 19 year old son, I have to have in, in mm. 2020. I have to have that conversation again, and I'll have it with him again and again if it's if I deem that it's necessary. But uh, uh, we that's a conversation that we had to have, and you would think that it would be easy, but it really wasn't. Mm. 
but you know he complied and uh, he knows what to do. And I just um, every morning when I leave, man, I uh, uh, lay hands on my family as they're sleeping. I'm leaving and, and pleading the blood of Jesus over. And I just asked him last night about that, and uh, and uh, he's usually asleep. I think he said, "I see you every morning, Daddy." It's mm. awesome, Jesse. Yeah. But awesome. but that was that was uh, really. So there were a lot of layers to the anger. Yes. Yes. Right. Just coming yes. in waves and processing it, and then you being a, a pastor, you're also charged to help your congregation process. Yes. Right. Yes, sir. You helping them process their. Yes, anger. sir. I th I thought about Jesse how. For white people, the past two weeks, it's been like front page news in all of our lives, like front page, mm -hmm. the, the stark like racism that's running so rampant, the mistreatment, the, the injustice. It's like front page yes. for, for us. But in reality, in conversations with you, it's, it's been front page. This is front page for decades, yes. Yes. right? I yes, mean, sir. the- Yes, sir. So from Bre Breonna Taylor to George Floyd to uh, Aubrey, you know, the, the, the names go on and on and on. Yes, they do. Right? Yes, they do. And I wanted you, could you talk about, um, I, think, I think what I'd like some help understanding is the response when that anger rises up and you just can't watch the bad movie one more time. Like, I gotta watch this movie again. Mm -hmm. I, got, I mean, it's the same movie over, over and over again. and over, right? Yeah. And the response is to, to move out sometime, move out into the streets and start looting and burning. And like, so, so from, a, from a white person's perspective, we look at it and we go, it doesn't make sense why we would destroy some of the very properties that we're living in or businesses that we're around. Mm -hmm. And yet I know that there's got to be some something behind that and drive it. So I wanted you to speak to us, help us understand like, how should we see that when we see the African-American community on the backside of a George Floyd, they just move out into this, you know, kind of violent eruption? Um, I, you know, thank you for that, that, that question. And, and this is a conversation and, and I, uh, for all the listeners that are listening, I bless the Lord for uh, Pastor Eric because he, wanted to have conversations uh, that nobody else wanted to have. So I'm again honored to, that you even gave me this opportunity and uh, to set up this time so we can even speak about that. Uh, to, to, but to answer that question, uh, one thing that I want uh, the world to recognize and to, to really to keep it real, uh, that um, it, the majority of the people uh, that were out there uh, looting and setting fires and violence, uh, it was probably half white and half black. Mm. Uh, that's one of the things that the, the media hardly talks about, but if you would look at a lot of the riots that are going on, excuse, mm. not even the riots, but even the marching and the protests, yeah. uh, like even Sunday when we were there with Indiana yeah. Faith, uh, man, if it wasn't uh, half Caucasian and right. half black, it was close. Saturday was the same thing. So uh, that's one of the, uh, stigmas that always go on when that stuff happens, mm. they're usually always, again, systemically, this is the systemic racism piece, to point out that as uh, the black folks are doing because they're mad and they're uprising. Mm. Uh, protests are a form of communication. Uh, very necessary. I believe in having peaceful protests and uh, uh, we, we try to protest peacefully, but we went ignored and people didn't want to hear us. Mm. But until buildings start getting uh, demolished and, and things like that, now we want to have a conversation. You know, people want to talk civil then. Gotcha. Uh, and you know, and it's one of those things, and, and, and unfortunately, uh, some people are still thinking that, uh, that, that the businesses and their buildings are worth more uh, than that black man's life. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing too that uh, I have an issue with. Uh, I don't, I, for the record, I don't condone the looting I don't condone violence, especially if a person is not threatened. Uh, I don't convert, condone uh, burning things down uh, that don't even belong to you. I, 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 I don't. 
but uh, this is a way that people are expressing their energy. Uh, and I believe that some people that are doing those rioting and things like that, and the looting and, and the burning of buildings, you know, they're not even necessarily for the cause. I think a lot of people out there are doing that because they're opportunists. Mm. Uh, uh, they're not really uh, down for the cause. They're not down for justice. They're not down for equality. But I think a lot of people out there are opportunists. But that's not the way. Uh, and, and, and again, and I'm going to express my, uh, uh, identify my station. We have to stop really broad stroking categories of people. Yeah. Uh, black and white, even though me and you may use that term to, uh, right. tonight, I'm not broad stroking. Uh, every white person is not like I'm expressing, and right. Pastor Eric, I can probably say it to you, is when we're referring to black people. But when we talk about this um, uh, this looting and this rioting, and, and it's, it's something harder even to stomach for me because I don't like that because what it does, it, it does something that America loves and always loves. America loves a diversion. Mm. And what I mean by that, they love something uh, uh, to, to pop up to take their eye off the real issue. So that's one of the reasons I don't like the looting and the violence and uh, the, the, the burning of things because it takes the focus off of the dead man that's in the land in the street. And, 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 and it bothers me when the media does that and they, you, it, 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 it's, it's amazing, it's just about how what's embedded in, yeah. in, in, in society and stuff. Mm -hmm. The same thing, uh, and this isn't off subject, but uh, uh, a lot of people may not like it, but that's okay, get in line. Uh, uh, with Colin Kaepernick, uh, uh, when he kneeled for the flag, uh, he told the world why he was doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I cannot remember what brother the police had just killed and maybe killed one before that. He told society what he was doing, why he was doing it. But they made him look like he was not a patriot. So they took the focus and put it on Colin Kaepernick instead of a black man that was killed by police officers. Uh, America loves diversion. And, so, and that's a whole other area about the flag thing. I respect the flag because I respect those men who died for our rights and who fought for our rights. But, you know, again, we can't blanket everybody. Everybody may not feel uh, 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 as strongly about the flag as, 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 as you do. Uh, maybe uh, your uh, uh, family that were in the wars came back from the war and they got a hero's welcome. Maybe when they passed away, they got buried in Arlington Cemetery. But some black men, a whole lot of black men, came back from the war missing a leg, missing an arm. Mm. They, they, they went off to fight for a country that, 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 that claimed they loved them and that cared about mm. them, but they came back to still, you can't eat at this diner. They still came back to, you can't use that water fountain. They still came back being oppressed and, 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 and intimidated uh, not to vote. They, they still came back being called a nigger this and a nigger that, yeah. you know. And then also when we talk about, uh, it also uh, uh, bothers me a bit too, uh, uh, and it shouldn't because I, I'm not surprised. It bothers me that uh, uh, some in white society, uh, in white America, have this, really this deep issue about the looting mm. and the violence and the burning things. When those people out there, I'm not even condoning, I already said that, but what they're doing, they're not doing nothing but what was propagated by white America many, many years ago. Mm. Come on now, mm. uh, 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 they, 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 they looted America, mm. <laughs> they looted uh, uh, us from Africa and brought us into slavery, they looted our rights. Uh, we're talking about violence. Oh, man, uh, uh, America uh, built on violence and, and just breeds violence. Mm. And I'm going to just talk about just the, the, the black experience. They, 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 they raped our women. Mm. <laughs> they raped our kids. They raped our men, too. We don't really want to talk about that. That's a whole different subject. But they drug us out of our houses, tied a rope around our neck, hung us on a tree until our neck snapped. Then they castrate us, and then they burn us up and set us on fire. So I understand uh, uh, America's uh, uh, mm. maybe not understanding mm. this, but this is something that is America has propagated a long time ago. Yeah, it's been going on so long. So long. Jesse, like when I think, I, I mean, I hear you describe it, I just think, we're 2020. Hmm. We're sitting here in 2020. Having this conversation. Having this conversation. And supposedly this land is set up that the rest of the world is supposed to look upon and say, we're the United mm. States of America. America. Yeah. 
And I thought about how often we say the Pledge of Allegiance in our classrooms, right, in our events. We pledge allegiance to the flag, and it ends with, and liberty and justice for all. We're called the land of the free. We're known for freedom. We're known for equality. Like, that's like bannering statements for the United States of America. Yes, it is. So, Jesse, talk about why is this so complicated that we're still here in 2020, even though all those kind of documents are written and Pledge of Allegiance are said, and, and we're here having this kind of a conversation, talking about a real man named George Floyd and a real young lady named Breonna Taylor, yeah. having lost their lives in these circumstances. It's just repeat, repeat, repeat. Seems like Groundhog Day sometimes, don't it? Yeah. yeah. And just thinking about, like, help, help us with, from your seat, help us see what, what is so, why is this such a complicated issue that we couldn't see greater progress? You'd think with all of the resources and all the attention and all the people who've worked tirelessly, I think about all the people who've given their lives to see that we wouldn't have this yeah. in 2020. Like, yeah. I looked at the news feed and I thought, is this really happening? Right. Like right now? Yeah. It's unbelievable, wasn't it? Yes. If you didn't see it, it would be really And I said, is hard. this really it happening? Really and then in conversations with you, you're like, Eric, hmm. this has been happening for yeah. decades and decades. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I'm going to mess his quote up, but he, I saw uh, a part of a quote that he said today, he talked about uh, racism is like dust. Uh, it's, it's always been there, but until you shine a light on it, you that's mm. when you see it. Uh, you can sit and be there, sitting there choking on it and, or whatever, but it's there. It's always been there. It's always been there. Mm. And, and, and this this thing is just so hard to to solve, you know, just because of the, uh, uh, I believe, and again, and, and two, uh, uh, all you lovely listeners out there, I don't speak for all black people, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think a lot of this... Uh, it's hard to solve this because of this systemic racism that's just that's just been uh, uh, inbred into society. You know, the, the systemic racism. I mean, it's like uh, 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 it's just set up. You know, uh, uh, against uh, uh, African Americans. And and when I speak of the systemic racism, just I I examples. You know, like uh, who uh, controls most of the wealth, has most of the wealth. You know, uh, white people do. Uh, think about uh, where, uh, how um, uh, housing and affordable housing and things uh, uh, were available. You know, it's, it's, it's built in uh, for uh, African Americans uh, really not to, to be able to prosper, to be on the same playing field. Uh, if I uh, uh, drive through a neighborhood uh, uh, that's predominantly white, I might get stopped uh, with a, a DWB. For those who don't know, that means driving while black, you know, uh, in Carmel, anywhere, you know, because I'm black, uh, want to know where I'm going. I remember my wife had an incident. Uh, it was in a, in a city, and a, and a white police officer stopped her, and one of the first things he said to her was, where are you going? And she let him have it, you know, really let him know that it really ain't none of your business where I'm going. You know, you know, okay, I'm 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 going to uh, uh, to, to to score some crack or rob a bank. You want to wait? I'll be back. But but that's not an issue. I, I'm I'm a grown man, uh, a grown black man, and I can be I can go anywhere that I want to go. But this systemic racism set up for you know police officers are stopping uh, black men uh, uh, at a higher rate than they are uh, white men. Uh, when we talk about systemic uh, uh, racism, uh, think about. Uh, uh, job opportunities. Uh, a black man and a white man, uh, they can have the a, a, a same degree, same experiences, uh, 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 same expertise, same qualifications, but a white man may get the job. A white man may even get the interview because his name is quote unquote more white sounding mm. than the black man. Mm. Systemic racism. And, 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 and it's everywhere, and it's just all in, uh, all in our faces. We can't, uh, we, we can't ignore it. When we talk about systemic racism, oh, I saw one uh, this morning, amen, uh, Laura Ingram from Fox. Mm -hmm. she's, a, she's a gem. And she, she really is. You know, mm -hmm. she's just a, a, a hot mess. She was the one that when Kevin Durant and LeBron James were giving an interview about something, and uh, she went off and talked about, well, this is why you don't... Uh, 
take advice from uh, 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 athletes that make uh, millions of dollars. I'm misquoting her, forgive me, but the point that makes millions of dollars. And she said, well, well, uh, uh, people didn't vote for you, LeBron James and Kevin Durant, but millions of people voted for Donald Trump. Like someone said, uh, just dribble and shut up. Mm -hmm. But yesterday, Drew Brees' controversy, yeah. when he spoke about he don't respect nobody that does, uh, that kneels to the flag, she says on her show, she says, well, he's a man that has a right to his opinion. Mm. Mm. Systemic racism at its highest. And then the guy had the nerve, then the, 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 the guy that was with her, they had the nerve to say, they're out in the street saying, "Elp you breeze, help you breeze. Oh, what a tarnish they're putting on this great uh, uh, New Orleans Saints or a team and organization. And the, and, the, and the white brother was sitting next to her. And yeah, he's a Christian. And it's, it's amazing how they throw the Christianity piece in because when we were slaves and, 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 and getting beaten and castrated mm -hmm. and getting raped and getting our neck snapped, uh, some of them did it in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Some of them claimed to be Christians. I don't know if you are or not, but that ain't love. So when we, when we, when we, when we talk about the, 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 this problem, uh, 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 Pastor Garrick, this, uh, 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 one of the reasons this thing is hard to get solved as well, too, is because there's a not enough white people stepping up to speak up, mm. like yourself, mm. like Chris Ballard. They're not, there's not enough speaking up. Mm. It, it, it's, just enough, it's just not enough. If, um, if black people, if we could fix all of these issues by ourselves, guess what? We probably would have a long time ago. Mm. But the truth of the matter is, we can't. Is it that we got to come together? We, like, there's got to be we, a... We, we have to, uh, 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 Pastor uh, Eric, because think about uh, when um, Martin Luther King in the Civil Rights Movement. Yes, he was on the front line, and everybody knows that he didn't do it all himself. But when you were seeing him marching, there were white brothers right there, too. Yeah. Right there, too, on the front lines with him. There were white men and women behind the scenes. A lot of white people that sacrificed a lot of people, and that was a tougher time then uh, than, than, than now. Mm. You know, a lot of people stepped up. A lot of people uh, 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 forgot about the fear. They didn't let fear rule them because the Lord didn't give us the spirit of fear anyway, but a power and a sound mind and, and, and love. That's the spirit God uh, gave us. So and, and even with that, and, and I think also too, Pastor Eric, uh, the Underground Railroad. Oh man, uh, Harriet Tubman, yeah, she uh, 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 put in some work grinding and, and, and going back. I forgot how many times she went back mm -hmm. to free slaves and how many she, she freed. But all that stuff was orchestrated and, 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 and put in place. That system was set up uh, and there were white abolitionists and people there to help her out with them. To solve that issue. To break people away from slavery. And this is the, the, this hatred, this racism, mm. the, 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 this cloud that's hanging over the world, not just Indianapolis or Minneapolis. Man, this is a form of bondage. Mm. And, and, and the enemy is shrewd. He has the black man pointing at the white man, the white man pointing at the black man, everybody pointing at the police, and ain't nobody pointing at the enemy. Yeah. Who is the main corporate? Right. Isn't that such a great pick? Like yes. the battle really, like I've been, I've, been, I've been talking at Eagle about how the fingerprints of God's work is a, is a uniting and a yes. bringing us together. Yes. Unity in the midst of diversity. Yes. That Jesus coming yes. right and paid the price for all. Thank Pentecost Jesus. Sunday, last Sunday, yes. the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. poured out for all. Yes. Like yes. the work of the genuine Hallelujah. work of God's Spirit yes. is a uniting work. It is a it is a uniting work, and, and 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 I wish people would really would really see that. If people really would not just see it, because I think some people see it, but they don't live it out for some reason or another. Uh, 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 of, of, of fear or, 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 or being talked about or being ostracized from their mm. community or, or lose their country club membership or lose their job for speaking out, you know. But, but one of these things is that we, we as, as Americans, uh, as a country, we have, to, we have to find some common ground because there's a lot of common ground. 
but we uh, have to get there and, and get there in unity and move forward to get out of this mess that we've been in for so many years. And this is another thing too, Pastor Egg, why I think that it's so hard to, uh, to close the door on this situation uh, because there's a whole lot of generational hurt. Hmm. Help us understand that. A lot of generational hurt. Uh, um, um, Emmett Till. He was born in 1941. He was a 14. For those that don't know, he was a 14-year-old black kid who was 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 beaten beyond recognition uh, uh, by uh, uh, some Caucasians for uh, supposedly uh, disrespecting a white woman in her family store. He was beaten so bad they couldn't even recognize him and they wanted to have a closed castle, of course, but his mother said no. She wanted the world to see what they did to her son. Mm. And, and, and I had a great conversation with a, with a, with a, with a great brother and, and, and his, and, and, I, and I love him to death, and he wanted to, he said, man, check me if I'm wrong in our conversation. And, and, and he made a comment uh, and, and this comment was, was probably uh, that un, of many white Americans. He thought it was, in, 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 what's the word, in, indigenous, in, indigenous, yeah. indi indigenous for us to continue to bring up slavery. Mm. And I love this brother. I, I don't know ill will to- He didn't to, want but, you to bring up slavery. Well, uh, black people as a whole. He didn't think that it was very productive and that it was so long ago. So the reason I bring up Emmett Till, he was born in 1941. So if he was living today, what would that put him? 79 years old? Right. A grandfather? So, so, so no, we cannot forget wow. what happened to Emmett Till on slavery because I won't say that that's our heritage. Uh, that's our history. You mean that we can't really understand it. I don't know that we can have this conversation about really when you look at right and you're saying, hey, when you look at systemic racism, we have to have a conversation about slavery. We have to. There, there, you know, Eric, there, there's no, there, Pastor Eric, there's no ifs, ands, and buts. There's no way around it. There's no way to tiptoe around it. Uh, there's, there, there's no way to sugarcoat it. We, we, we have to talk about those things. And, 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 and a lot of people are asleep, you know, uh, uh, not just white Americans, but black Americans too. A lot of, a, a lot of black Americans uh, uh, are, 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 are not okay per se about uh, what happened. Uh, you know, a lot of black Americans, uh, again, I told y'all earlier, I don't speak for all black Americans, right. but I speak for Jesse, all right? <laughs> Amen. Uh, 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 some black Americans, their, their idea of it is, well, what did he do? <laughs> Talking about Brother George Floyd, what did he do? It doesn't matter what he did. It doesn't matter what he did. He didn't deserve to die like that. Mm -hmm. They had him cuffed. They had him subdued. It was time to put him in the car and let justice do his thing. But, but, but see, they want us to forget about all these things that happened, and, and, and slavery is one of them, and we, and we can't forget about that. You know, we were looted from Africa and they, have a, they talk about the looting downtown. We were looted from Africa. We didn't ask to be here. And what kills me faster is some of them people have the nerve to say when they get mad at us, well, go back to Africa. Well, you know, we didn't ask to come no way. <laughs> but, 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 but we can't forget uh, a man of God. We, 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 we can't forget because if we, if, if we forget where we came from, we're going to be a mess. And a lot of what white society don't understand, again, it's not a broad stroke. Right. But, but, uh, but what white, some white society don't understand is that these tears that we're crying, this hurt that we're feeling, this pain that's just eating us up like a cancer, but especially these tears that we are crying, they're not just for George Floyd. Mm. They're for Kunta Kinte. Mm. They're for Megger Evers. They're for Emmett Till. Therefore, the four little girls that were bombed that were, were gotten were bombed at that that church in Birmingham. This is for uh, 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 Philando uh, Castile. Come on, these, these for Breonna Taylor, for Michael Taylor. These, 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 these tears, man, you know, these tears are for Rodney King, Dr. King. And Michael Taylor, I was just talking to my family about this case. He was a young kid that I was familiar with his family. They lived on the south side, went to Manuel on Draper Street, not far from him here. Uh, I think it was maybe 30 years ago, if I'm not uh, correct, about 30 years ago, he was arrested. Mm. They put him back in this, this IPD. They arrested him. 
put him in the back of the police car, handcuffed. Michael ends up dead. The police say, the world says, the city says that Michael shot himself in the head. This is why I have, you know, this, 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 is, this is how deep racism goes for me, uh, man of God. They say they, he shot himself in the head. Well, how do you explain that? Black people, we want to know. We, 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 black people, we want to know, how did he shoot himself in the head? Their excuse was there was a, a gun wedged down in the seat that another suspect must have left mm. with his hands behind his back. And he's cuffed? Cuffed, shot himself in the head. Systemic racism. Mm. They, I remember them bringing on TV contortionists. That's a slap in the face. Contortionists to show how this kid shot himself in the head. And, 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 and when we go off about that, when we riot, when we protest, uh, when we loot, uh, when we don't go with the status quo, and just bow down and humble down and be still and shut up and don't bring it up, mm. we're rebellious. See, see, th th this thing about us being rebellious, uh, 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 you know, uh, white society really expects uh, black people to really uh, to cower to them like they did way back then. So when we don't act the way they want us to act or when we buck or don't go along with the status quo, we're considered rebellious. Mm. Let me break that down for you. I got my hand here uh, and, 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 uh, and, and this, is, this is the thoughts of some of white America. I got my hand sitting here and white America uh, 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 wants to, to bash it with, a, with a, uh, a sledgehammer. But as they bash it and even they draw slugs, Chairman, I move it. They, they no move it. They put it back. They, they forcefully put it back. But when I move it and they say that I'm a, they call me a rebellious nigga. Mm. Because I don't want you to, to hurt me. I'm not going to let you hurt me. Not in this lifetime or no lifetime. But when I don't let you hurt me or kill me mm. or destroy me, I'm rebellious. And, the, and these things are, 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 are deep scars. Yeah. And, and, and this racism, and, and I think that every, every black person, I just say 20s and up, you know, and even if those younger uh, uh, would really reflect, I think every black person has experienced uh, uh, levels of racism at, 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 at multiple levels. Mm. Man of God, I remember uh, when I was young, just the racism I experienced. Uh, if I could just share a couple with yeah, you. Yeah, please. Uh, I was in school, I was probably a, um, a junior at the time at Manuel High School. My brother was a senior. We had English class together. And my teacher, English teacher, his name was Mr. Snotty. I know we probably don't want to say names, but the, <laughs> we, we need to expose things, don't we? Okay. Mr. Snotty, uh, we had an essay to do. And uh, uh, we had turned them in, you know, the grades that came back. Came in the class, passed everybody's out, skipped over me. See, I didn't sit in the back row as a kid because I, I just didn't. I didn't know he was, I was in, the, in a game, you know, mm. this game of life. I just always kind of sat in the front, second row or first row. That was just me because I couldn't, wasn't nothing, you know what was going on in the back of the class. So uh, uh, he skipped over me. Yeah, uh, you didn't give me my paperback, Mrs. Nye. Well, you know what? You didn't write it. What you talking about? You heard me. You didn't write it. Busting me out in front of the whole class. Was it embarrassing? No, because I was cool and comfortable in who I was and stuff. Didn't embarrass. I'm like, man, what are you talking about? I did write. No, you didn't. Woo, 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 this, woo, woo, that. And, and, and God, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that... Uh, I, I look back now and I'm glad that my brother wasn't there. He was older than me and a very protective of me because that would have probably turned out ugly. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And, and I don't know if he threw me out the class because of our back and forth or I walked out, but I went down the office. Uh, Mr. Root was the principal, and, I, and everybody, a lot of people couldn't stand Mr. Root, but Mr. Root was my guy. I worked in the office and stuff. And they were like, what, what are you doing down here just out of class? I said, I need to call my daddy. 
White America, that's what we call black folks call our daddy dads. We call them daddies, okay? It's a difference, amen. I call my daddy. My daddy marched, got to the school, I mean, like lickety split, and he came and brought the noise. And I was like, man, what's your, I said, so you, you telling me, you, you think that I'm not smart enough to do this? You think because I'm a, a, a black athlete that I'm not capable of doing this? Was this too good for you? And he sat there and ate crow. Hmm. Racism. And, I, and I'm glad that I had some, some, some strong parents and some st strong support that I didn't go left. And then one more I share with you, if it's okay. Yeah, please. I uh, in the uh, '90s I was uh, I, I was playing basketball for IUPUI, and uh, going to school there, of course, uh, working at Harry Levinson Men's Store in Washington Square Mall, my first job ever. And I remember uh, um, coming from work one day, and um, there was a, a Circle K gas station that's right on the corner of 30th and Midhoffer. I went in there to probably get some gas or something, and I can't remember what bill that I gave the guy. And as a matter of fact, uh, to come to find out later, it was a, a, a off-duty cop, maybe moonlight or just doing a second job. Him and a, a girl there, but the, the, the guy, the cop, he was at the register. Not no uniform, and like I said, I found out that he, he was. He might have even told me he was in the, when he was in the store. But uh, when I paid him, he didn't give me my correct change back. I mean, I can count. I'm educated. And my father always told me, if you can't count nothing, be able to count money. And so I was like, I didn't get all my, my money back. I said, hey, man, you didn't give me all my change back. Yeah, I did. I said, no, you did. Yeah, I did. I said, man, no, you didn't. I gave you whatever it was, a 10 or 20, whatever. And we had a back and forth. And I was like, man, just forget you, because I saw I wasn't going to win. Next day, very next day, sweetheart remembers this. Next day, she's smiling, white smiling. Uh, I'm coming out of Kavanaugh Hall at IUPUI, IUPUI's campus. She's coming, I think, out of the lecture hall. My girl, she was my girlfriend then, but she's my queen and my wife now. I see her on campus. I'm like, what is she doing here? She's on campus looking for me because my mother had called her because the police was at my house looking for a box cutter and some clothes that I had supposedly wore and came back to that gas station to cut the female attendant up. Wow. Yes, I, I, I used to have a, a horrible disposition for police. Mm. I wonder why. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just did, and then because, I mean, it, it, it's just, that's the type of things that we have, and I remember going to, Greenwood Mall before it was anything like it was there. I, I think I was a sophomore then. Me and three of my friends, one of the guys drove, and, 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 and there's about three or uh, four of us there in Greenwood Mall. Undercover security cat. You know what he was doing, man. Hmm. Following us around. I would stop, look, make a couple of more moves. He would stop, and then look like he was window shot. Like, man, I see you. <laughs> what are you following me for? And this is just like the dust in the air. It's the dust in the air. I mean, this is, this is, this is the dust in the air and, th and this broad stroke thing that I, that I was, was speaking about, uh, speaking to text today, and I thank text to serve yeah. and let him know that I know all cops ain't bad, and I'm, and I'm glad to have a, 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 greater, uh, a, a, a greater heart for them now uh, because all cops ain't bad. We have to stop broad stroke. Right. But when I grew up over here on Harlan Street, two and a half blocks away, uh, the, the neighborhood was drug infested, so if it's drug infested, there's also drug dealing, right? But uh, the police used to put all of us in that category. They, they expected all of us, you know, to be there. I wasn't no angel, I wasn't no saint and stuff, but I was working, I was going to school, yeah. and I didn't like the way that they would just always harass us and just give us the blues, man, just because of where we lived. Mm. You know, one cop was, you know, he was, uh, me and my brother, you know, walking the village pantry one night. It's right in the alley, right down straight shop. Cop was sitting there. He's looking at me, so I'm looking at him. We go in the store, he's looking at me, I'm looking at him. He follows us down the alley to our front porch and says, why are you effing me with your eyes? I'm like, really? So, yeah, we cussed him out. We did. 
you know. Uh, he's like, come off the porch. He did. This guy is in front of my house. Nothing else to do. Sure, something else to do. Come off y'all's porch. And my brother, he's, he's rough. That's my guy. I always protect him. Out of he told the police, well, why don't you take off your badge and your gun? Now, why don't you come down here? Why? So you can cattle prod us? <laughs> Throw us in jail? Again, man, that's unnecessary. That, that, that's unnecessary. And, and, and so this thing that happened with George Floyd, uh, with the police, this isn't brand new. But it has to stop somewhere, and that is not going to stop until we unite and, and, and until uh, 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 non-blacks, especially Caucasian, speak up about this injustice and equality and police reform. And a lot of people want justice, uh, uh, but they, uh, they, they let uh, uh, the quest for justice uh, overrule the fact that this man is dead. And yeah, I want justice too. Uh, man of God, but there wouldn't be no no need for justice to be executed in this situation if the police officer didn't commit a crime. Yeah. Jesse, it feels just so like weighty, like heavy. You know, you just you just think about for you, you just recounted in your own life decades worth of personal experiences. Yeah. Right, and then you go back to the foundations of our country with slavery being so much a part of the fabric of our nation. I don't know that we can have the conversation without yeah. being honest about the things. So thank you for your willingness, well, your willingness to share those stories. And I just feel the weight of it all as we talk and it kind of, it leads me to this question where I, I wanted you to, to talk about as a man of God, as a follower of Jesus, you look to your God in times like this, and how, how's the Lord coming to Jesse? Like what, in the midst of this, especially these last couple weeks, and just maybe where in the word he's been speaking to you, what are, the, what are kind of the themes you feel like, because the Lord's with you in yes. this, you know that, right? We oh, talk man. about that, the Lord yes. is with you, he's yes, your he God. And, yes, he is. And I know you're depending on him, and I know yes, you're he is, calling Pastor. out to him. Yes, 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 he is, and I and I and I bless the Lord for that, uh, for just being a, 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 a ear to Him, and uh, I've uh, um, the, the the Lord knows what we need when we need it, and I thank God because of His uh, omnipotence. Yeah. It's tired, it's impeccable. When you had uh, uh, called me Saturday, I was uh, you know on the fishing bank. Uh, that's my relaxation. That's my peace, but still was heavy hearted. And also uh, uh, felt a little way because uh, uh, I was serving that morning and went to go fishing to relax. But my family, my wife and my children, uh, they wanted to go protest. And, you know, I said, go, you know, in, in, in the power of God. And I'm bleeding the blood over them. And, and, and you're, 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 when you reached out to me, that was just like right on time. And, and God has been sending uh, people to, uh, uh, to just to speak peace and, Mm. And, uh, and and to speak love and, and things like that. And but you've always been like that. Your style is X's and O's, man. You nothing but love. But he but he really has. He's really been uh, speaking a lot uh, to me. And, and one of the things that, that stick out is Proverbs three and uh, man five and six. Mm. You know, man, lean not, Jesse, <laughs> to your own understanding, mm. but in all your ways acknowledge me. And I shall direct your paths. I ain't let you down yet. You know, uh, 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 Isaiah 54, uh, verse 17, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just especially, you know, uh, no weapons formed against you are going to prosper. And that's something that uh, uh, as, as Christians as a whole, I, 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 I pray that, you know, we, we, we take this in, that, that verse in today. I, a lot of times we just say verses sometimes like they cliches or because right. that's the verse we know that rolls off the tongue sweet. But, but, but the Bible doesn't say that weapons won't form. Right. He just said they won't prosper. That's a good word. You know that they won't prosper. Uh, uh, he's been uh, uh, speaking to me in, in, in Matthew 5, verse 9, you know, just uh, uh, just, just strongly. And I bless the Lord for, for the, the, the conversation uh, that, that, that you and I had about, mm -hmm. uh, about my hurt and my anger and my role. Uh, as far as as far as leading people and guiding people, uh, 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 how to use their anger and how to deal with their anger. 
And, 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 and he's been just speaking to me out of Matthew 5, verse 9, you know, uh, blessed are the peacemakers. For they, man, they'll be called the children of God. You know, blessed are the peacemaker and 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 First uh, Peter three and eleven. I love it. One of my favorite verses. Seek peace mm. and pursue it. Wow. You know, run after it, mm. Jesse. You know, run after it. You know, run 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 after peace. You be a peacemaker, okay? I know what the world is doing this, but Jesse, this is what you do. I, I, I know you angry and stuff, and, and Lord have mercy, God, I love you, Lord. You know, aren't you working on a message next Sunday to, to, to speak to your people? Don't let the enemy uh, tickle your emotions. And, and Pastor, I fail. I let him tickle me. And I, and, I, and I was ashamed, amen, about how I let him uh, tickle my emotions, amen. But, but, but yes, this is the, the, the things that the Lord uh, is speaking to me. Uh, 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 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Uh, Lord, the Lord did not give us the spirit of fear, yeah. but of power, love, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. So, 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 don't let your emotions, Lord, have mercy. Don't let your emotions cloud your mind. Yeah. Don't let your emotions be bondage, because you're free. Oh Lord! And then this morning, uh, John six and uh, and thirty five, uh, I am the bread of life. Oh, Fred Hammond has this beautiful, uh, th th this beautiful song. Uh, it's called uh, "Living Word." Listen to it if you haven't heard it, man. It's it's a it's a beautiful song. The praise team sing it, and and this morning. The Lord put that in my spirit, and, and mm -hmm. I tell you, I was, uh, I know exactly where I was at when he put it into my spirit. I was uh, going to work, and I was uh, jumping off on a Crawfordsville Road exit, and, and got on a light and hit it on YouTube and blasted it. And man, mm -hmm. you talking about where it took me to, so I blasted out a text to I don't know how many people. Mm -hmm. I said, I dare you play this song right now at maximum volume and call me and let me know what it do to you. And the response of the people that, that did it, it was amazing. Mm. But those are just some of the things that the Lord has been speaking and just encouraging my, my spirit, God. man, and, and strengthening me. So I'm in a much better place than I, today than I was when Monday, when that tragedy happened. All right. Thanks and for I, sharing that, Jesse. Thanks for giving us a little window into the soul work. Just the, welcome, I thought about Jesus being Emmanuel, God with us. You know, he's been that yes, for yes. you in this time, and, yes, yes. and thanks for sharing that. Um, yes, yes. I thought about the, the text we exchanged when I first reached out to you. Um, you replied, do you know if you remember your reply was, yes, sir. you're the first non-black person hmm. to reach out to me. And man, my just my heart was hurting on that. I, I, could, I could tell that it was through, like, your, how, through your response. How can that man, be? God. How can that be? And when I think about um, many conversations I've been having over the last couple of weeks with my mainly white relationships, and like you, I'm not claiming to speak for all white people, but I think we have to have the conversation about. Yes, sir, my brother. But the tension is like Jesse. I think. We as white people, we want to say something. We want to speak up, but we don't know what to say. Yes. And we feel like we might say the wrong thing. Yeah. We, we don't want to add hurt on the hurt. Yeah. Um, we don't want to get labeled as you just don't know what to say and yeah. everything's getting edited today and everybody's accused and, yeah. you know, of not saying the correct thing. And yes, so there's sir. this thing inside. I wonder if you could just help the listeners today, like, well, what would you want to say to to folks who who feel a burden, who who feel they they want to say, "I see, I hear, I care," uh, but I don't know what to say. Well, I uh, first of all, thank you for reaching out, mm -hmm. and uh, I do have to say that this was all God uh, because some of these people. Uh, you may not even have their numbers, and, but this was all God. But but uh, right. me speaking that in the atmosphere and what you did, it uh, uh, set off uh, mm. some great events of some phone calls from some of my non-black brothers. Amen. Again, like I said earlier, God knows what you need when you need it. Um, uh, to answer your question about what, what I will say uh, to those that. Uh, don't know what to say. 
don't feel bad that you don't know what to say because some of our brothers and sisters, black brothers and sisters, they don't even know what to say. And they're hurting their pain and their anguish and their disgust. So that is very, very understandable. Uh, also, um, uh, don't feel um, ashamed that you can't understand the black experience and, and what I'm going through as a black man or how my queen is, what she's going through as a black woman. Because you'll never be able to understand that yeah. since you're not black. Yeah. Like we can't understand uh, 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 being white. Yeah. We just can't. But if you can't understand uh, exactly what we're going through as African Americans, you can still understand our pain as human beings. You, can, you understand hurt, you understand loss, mm. you understand some sort of struggle, uh, you understand uh, hardship to some degree, you, 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 uh, you, you understand job loss, you understand death, uh, uh, and the biggest thing that you understand uh, is right and wrong. Yeah. Uh, so we want you to speak out. Speak out. Better than silence right now, right? Because uh, 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 silence is deafening. Silence is, 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 is deafening. It really is. And like you, I, I said, you uh, uh, set some events off. God knows what we need. And, and then he said that he'll supply all of our needs. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, uh, uh, after I uh, spoke to you, what day was that we spoke uh, that we inquired about? Saturday. Doing this. And then Wednesday. That, we was, Wednesday. that, 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 yeah. that, was, that was Wednesday. We talked on Wednesday. Uh, and, uh, and Tuesday I was in a, in a, in a rough place. Uh, pulled up in my uh, driveway, back to my driveway, and I had a call from my uh, 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 college basketball coach, Coach Bob Lovell. Mm. Great man. Uh, um, he was he was the first and probably still is uh, one of the, he was the first influential white man in my life. Uh, and uh, one of the greatest. And he called and said he's just checking on all his guys. And that's how I was doing. And my response to him, you know, I'm hanging in there. But I told him, same with you, I'm pain, hurting, yeah. you know, frustrated, angry. I told him I'm trying to be the man of God, the, the man of God that God ordained me to be. But just that reach out. Just, 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 just that reach out. Amen. And, just the, and the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then he came back and said, Jesse, I'm never frustrated. He said, use that frustration to fuel your mission. To fuel your mission. And he said, if you ever need anything, let me know. He said, you know I love a good fight every now and then. Just to reach out. Matt Godbow. Man, mm. shout it out. That's my brother, man. That, that, that's, that's my brother. Yeah. Uh, uh, we love each other, love each other's kids. And he made a comment. He said, man, he said, yeah, I wish the world could, ex could experience the relationship we have and the friendship we have. He said, the world would be a better place. Mm -hmm. Doug Melton come to my office, wants to talk. He said, man, what's going on? I want to just talk to you, brother. And we talked in conversation, and man, he said, brother, he wants to, you know how brilliant he is, but he wanted to know, let me know if he's wrong. I mean, Pete Ward, Kurt Humphrey, a uh, man just coming in, Kurt, Kurt Humphrey today told me twice he loved me today. Talking, getting to know each other. That's good, Jesse. You know, he was talking about, uh, 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 he never experienced racism, per se, and he said, but you know what? He said, when I be in Vietnam, when I'm walking out at night, he said, I have to watch out, because they told me, because of the way the people are looking at me. And right then, he realized that he had all so been a victim of racism. He said, Jesse, I know it ain't the same thing, because this is your country, and you shouldn't feel like this, yeah. but I feel it. Mm. Trey Mock. Yeah. Reach out, uh, yeah. you know, uh, 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 Eric Bowling, my brother Jason Adams, man, lives in, in mm. Plainfield, had me in tears uh, yesterday, uh, a couple of days just telling me how much he admires me as a man, not as a black man, just as a man. but as a man, just to reach out. Uh, a, a few people from work, my boss, uh, uh, Billy Wells, Corey Coots, you know, I, you know, I, 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 Lindsay, they, I, I just, mm. I call them out because I lift them up. Not like I'm keeping tabs per se, but, but maybe I am yeah. mentally. But the thing about uh, uh, 
silence is, 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 is deafening. And when we don't speak out, uh, the hurt will continue. Yeah. Uh, the healing uh, can't begin. Uh, so the message is say something. Say, right? say, say something. And, and, and too, Pastor Eric, I wanted to identify my station with this. I have to be honest and say I'm not hurt that some people didn't reach out. I'm not. I'm not. I, I wasn't even bothered about it when I made that statement yeah. to you, man of God. Yeah. I was just making a point. Yeah. I, I was just making a point, and, and I wasn't surprised because somebody called me and, and, and she sent me an email today, uh, and I just met her over mm -hmm. the phone, uh, a colleague, and, and she felt awkward because she just didn't know what to say. But she listened to a call that, the, uh, that we had mm -hmm. had, and she just felt, she said she had courage to call me. And I was, and I was, and I was, I felt great. But like you said, man, speaking out. And if I can, I want to re just read this uh, uh, today uh, from yesterday's paper yeah, go ahead. from uh, uh, from Dr. Martin Luther King about what we we're talking about. Uh, he wrote that this was from March, Dr. Martin Luther King, March 1965 in Selma, Alabama. He said, "Only way we can really achieve freedom is to somehow conquer the fear of death." But if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live. Deep down in our nonviolent creed is the conviction that there are some things so dear, some things so precious, some things so eternally true that they're worth dying for. And if a man happens to be 36 years old, as I am uh, 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 to be, some great truth stands before the door of his life some great opportunity to stand for that which is right and that which is just. And he refuses to stand up because he wants to live a little longer. And he's afraid his home will get bombed or he's afraid that he will lose his job or he's afraid that he will get shot or beat down by state troopers. He may go to live on until he's 80. He's just dead at 36 as he would be at 80. And the cessation of breathing in his life is merely the belated announcement of an earlier death of the spirit. He died. A man dies when he refuses to stand up for that which is right. A man dies when he refuses to stand up for justice. A man dies when he refuses to take a stand for that which is true. So we're, so we're going to stand up amid horses. We're going to stand up right here amid the billy clubs. We're going to stand up right here amid police dogs. If they have them, we're going to stand up amid tear gas. We're going to stand up to amid anything they can muster up, letting the world know that we are determined to be free. Mm. Powerful. Ain't that powerful. Powerful. Ain't that powerful. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. My God. That's just like in this bigger picture that we live in concerning eternity. Right. If we haven't made Jesus our choice, <laughs> we've already chosen Satan. Say that again. If we haven't made Jesus our choice, we've already chosen Satan. Mm -hmm. The scriptures tell us what the fingerprints of Satan are. Kill, steal, and destroy. destroy. That's why we have to stop pointing fingers at one another and point it to the real enemy. Because kill, steal, and destroy sure seems like a commentary on what's rolling through the news cycle these days. Absolutely. That's what's rolling through the hearts of, of a lot of people right now. Mm. And it's unfortunate. It's really sad, but this is the reality that we're living in right now. I want to get your reaction to something, uh, Jesse. I've been, I've been thinking about, could it be that spring of 2020, God quieted our lives down? Three plus months in quarantine, COVID-19, not saying God caused COVID-19, I just want you to think like, could God be using all the minimizing of distractions? We're kind of shut in our homes. Uh, we don't have the, the travel. We don't have the, 
the live sports. We don't have all the things that would pull us away. And we all had, the distractions. Just there's just been a cumulative effect of this kind of solitude time. And 90 plus days into that, as kind of the ground inside of us is settled, I wonder if the Lord has surfaced a massive injustice that's been on his heart for so long, but he finally has the attention of the heart of a nation to look at it again. But maybe this time, because of the Kind of the runway to it was a time of such a unique period across our whole nation and literally the world. Yes, yes, I agree. And then I want, I've just been wondering, I'm just wondering, Lord, have you, mm -hmm. have you dovetailed something together here that COVID-19 moves into this massive conversation now uh, about racial injustice that's been long overdue? It's time, yeah. it's time to see this eradicated yes, from our land. It's time. Yes, it is, brother. And I, and I, um, you know, God is uh, <clears throat> so much smarter than us, isn't he? Right. He is just so much smarter than us. And, uh, you know, I remember when uh, COVID-19 first came and, and just how it escalated. And, um, you know, people were talking about how it was going to get worse before it got right. better. But I bet nobody could say that they thought this would be... Why? A part of the worst. Who could have ever written this script? I mean, when we, I mean, New Year's resolution 2020, doesn't it feel like two years ago? Absolutely. Like January feels like Absolutely. two years ago. Absolutely. Who could have ever written the script in Absolutely. the spring of 2020 like this? And I, and I, and I think you really bring up a, a great point, man of God. You know, a God in his infinite wisdom, and uh, we know uh, uh, that uh, uh, the devil can't do anything uh, unless God allows it to, because God is still in control over the whole universe. You know, he he he, he allowed because he, he could stop anything, start anything, right. close anything, start anything. So you know, he allowed uh, uh, us to get hit with the virus. He uh, 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 death is imminent. He allowed this to to happen. And 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 for the unbeliever out there, even the, the Christians that don't know God, uh, God like that, uh, know that God is a just God. Hey man, he is a he is Amen. a he is a just God, and and he allow he has a perfect will and a permissive will, and he will allow things to to happen to bring us closer to him, and uh, and just think about uh, uh, when uh, uh, a few weeks ago, a month ago, when uh, COVID nineteen was really stirring up. Think about how America united, how we united to help our neighbors, to help our fellow man, fellow man, to to to, to help the overworked. Uh, 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 first responders and stuff like that. You know how we were sitting still, you know, with our families and stuff like you said, yeah. you know. And, you know, God, man, he's just so, he's so sovereign. Right. He's, he's, so, he's so sovereign. He knew that this was coming down or down the pipe. I like to tell people, you know, God, I, one thing I love about God, uh, his omnipresence is I, I always say he has this parade view. You know, when the uh, uh, Circle City Classic Parade or the 500 Parade's going on downtown, you know, uh, people could be sitting at the Federal Building on Pennsylvania Street, and then other people could be sitting uh, sitting down on, on Meridian and North Street, and all we can see as human beings is what comes past us, but not the good, not God he Almighty. The whole thing. He, sees, he sees the whole thing. Yeah. And I know all this stuff, you know, was, uh, is a part of his perfect plan, uh, I, and, and that's why as Christians, we need to uh, uh, continue to fight the fight, good fight of faith, and be steadfast because we know everything he does is is for a purpose. And uh, one of the things I believe his purpose is, even in this, is to unite humanity. I tell you, I was, and I got chills thinking about this. I was uh, 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 one of the things that, that I, maybe that held me per se uh, during all this uh, craziness that's going on in the world is to see the, the melting pot of people and religions out protesting mm. for justice and equality. I don't think I've ever seen that uh, in, 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 in my day and age uh, uh, of the people that are coming together yeah. for, for something like this, when a black man is killed in the, in, in the streets. I, think, I don't think I've never seen this in my lifetime mm. uh, uh, of, the, 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 of the unity. 
But what we have to do, we need that that unity must be used in a constructive manner, yeah. in a godly manner, in, in a way that is going to bring him glory and honor. Amen. So there's some hope there. Plenty. Plenty of hope. You know, hope. I've, I've been Plenty thinking about hope. how crisis often sparks renewal and revival. Like when we look on the, the history of God's working across the lands, mm -hmm. that crisis often is a key turning point to bring renewal. Yes. But also right on the heels of crisis is repentance. Yes. And so I, I'd love for you to respond to the, uh, as we think about the hope for our, our nation mm -hmm. and we think about the hope for things to be different. And the connection between all this upheaval that's happening, right? Or there's this sense about what in the world is going on. There just seems to be, everything seems to be so out of control. But yet, as a man of God, and as someone who looks, tries to look at the whole parade with God's perspective, right? And to speak to uh, this movement that may be so necessary right now in the heart, starting with God's people. Often the repentance begins in his own house. Absolutely. Right? Yes, sir. And the, and the calling his people to genuinely repent of things yes. that maybe have been carried for far, far too long in the back yes. closets of hearts that need to be confessed and called out. And, yes. and could that be a yes. kind of the swinging of the door to a, a yes. sweeping revival and renewal? That's what I've been. Yes, I, I, I think it could, Pastor, absolutely. And like you said, and, uh, you know, repentance, it does, it starts uh, 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 with, with, with God's people. You know, we have to, and, and you know, and repentance is, uh, as you know, it's not just, uh, you know, saying that, you know, that I'm sorry. You right. know, repentance is a, is, a, is, a, is a turning away from the sin and turning to God. Yeah. And, and, and I believe that's one thing that God is, is, is so doing uh, in this season uh, is, is calling his people, his creation back to him. Mm. Come, come, I, I created you. I need you to come to me. I need you to stop serving uh, uh, your job and yeah. and your wife and and in your basketball team and and your your, your, your memberships and all this. Stuff. Stop serving all these things because I am a jealous God. And I believe that 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 with this uh, with a corporate repentance, yeah. a national corporate repentance of us walking away from all that bondage that so easily besets us that we've been mm. carrying around for years. I think that's a, a, a place and space where we will really get ready to, to break through as a nation, as, as, as a world. But I really think God has called his people back to him mm. and he wants us to be repentant. Man, brother. He, I, 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 I really believe that I was speaking to a a brother today, and uh, he was saying that um, uh, forgiveness needs to take place. Mm -hmm. He was saying, and I asked him, I said, well, what you mean? He said, um, I, I, I think that um, um, black people should forgive, uh, you know, whites for what they've done mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and, he, and, he, and I love him to death and stuff. And he said, this was after the conversation, he said, man, I'm gonna let you know, I was really uncomfortable saying that, but I just wanted to know what you thought about it. Mm -hmm. And I said, you wasn't wrong, brother. I said, again, I know where I was at when I was thinking this this morning. Mm -hmm. I was on my way over the hill to go to McDonald's when I, I matter of fact, turned off a high school road onto West 38th Street. And I'm just thinking and stuff. Uh, about this forgiveness thing and I'm speaking to God and I was like you know I know forgiveness needs to be mm -hmm. done uh, but does uh, white America need to be forgiven I'm like God you know I can forgive you know a, a, a white man for what he's done or anybody for what they've done but does white America does this nation mm -hmm. uh, need you know Jesse's forgiveness. So when, so when the brother came to that, I like I was probably like, God, you the bomb. So when he came to me with that, I wasn't offended, wasn't bothered by it because I was just I was just thinking that. And I'm like, well, you know what? The nation is people. You know, the, the nation is, mm -hmm. is is made up of people, right? Right. 
So, but but and, and he made a good he, he made a very good point, and uh, and yeah, forgiven uh, what it was done to us is hard. That's 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 a tough cookie to crack. Uh, 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 should that even be the act be even forgiven, mm. or should the perpetrator be forgiven? Mm. And it's amazing when we left the. Uh, uh, the Faith uh, March, yeah. uh, there was a man standing on the corner of, of Market and Delaware. He had a sign, him and his wife. The sign said, I'm sorry. Wow. And we walked because we was parked right there. And my daughter said, she is my baby. She's a little activist, love her. She said, so you ain't got to be sorry. And he said, yeah, she says, no, you don't. Especially if you try to tear down these injustices, you ain't got to be sorry. He said, well, dear, I have to be sorry. I am. I'm sorry for my race. Mm -hmm. He took the white race on the show. I'm sorry for my race, he said, because this has been going on too long, and it's always been going on. He said, it's a systemic issue. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. I said, that is huge. I said, that, I said, I said, that, is, I was inspired and encouraged by that. Yeah, that's like a window into that repentance. Oh, here, man. Right? God know what he's doing. Yeah. I said, I told him, I told him, he's smarter than us. Yeah. There was, there was the window right there. Yeah. For repentance. So, yeah. So, as you sit here today, Pastor, I, I want to kind of make this our last question. Just yes, kind of sir. draw this to a close. I feel like we could have, like, we need to have a part two conversation yeah, at some point, you know, right? We could talk keep, all day. Keep, keep, keep talking. But yes. I wanted to kind of end on the theme of hope. And I just, I feel like speaking some words of hope and dreaming a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I thought about your beautiful family. Thank so, it'll be a picture you know, of your beautiful family up on the screen right now. And <laughs> love for you to introduce them to everybody. So just introduce your beautiful wife and okay. your two kids. And right. It's my beautiful wife, my queen. That's Lachelle Bingham. My wife will be married for 30 years on June 30th. Uh, my daughter, my lovely daughter, who's my heart, she's the beat of my heart, Jachelle Bingham. And that's my son, that's my brother, that's my, that, my man, uh, Jesse Bingham the second. Amen. And how old are the kids? Uh, my daughter on uh, Sunday, she's going to be 25. Amen. And my son's 19. Amen. Yeah. That's great. You know, you're a proud dad. I am. Proud a, husband. Lots yes, to be proud of. Yes. Thank you. They bring me a, bring me a whole lot of joy. It's my first ministry. Mm. Uh, they bring Amen. me a, a lot of joy. So I'd love for you to speak to the hopes and dreams you have for your kids and I know you long for them to experience something that's a different current reality. You know, yeah. that they'd be sitting around, you know, 20 years from now, run the tape out and, mm -hmm. and dream a little bit about where your hope resting, right? Because you and I both believe in the, the power of Christ to yes. change a human heart. Yes, like, we're giving our lives to that, yes. right? We believe that. Yes, sir. Yes, that, sir. That Jesus can yes. bring Hallelujah. a change. Jesus. And we know the change that we want to see externally has to start. Internally. Right? Start yeah. So maybe just speak a little bit to the hope that you have for the, the reality you long to see your kids experience. You know, my, my hope for them, um, um, uh, one of my greatest hope for my kids is uh, that they don't allow this situation here, which easily could, uh, tarnish their beautiful hearts because both of them have such beautiful hearts they're such good kids they're preachers kids and they really wear it well mm -hmm. I know they're not perfect <laughs> but they're preacher kids but they they, 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 they wear it well uh, uh, they, they wear it the right way uh, they wear it with honor uh, but that's one of my greatest hopes for them is to not let the world or anything like this or anything uh, tarnish their hearts and change the type of people that they are. Uh, both of them are so accepting, uh, so loving of 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 of, of everybody from uh, 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 from from race, uh, religion, socioeconomic status, or or, or 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 sexual preference or identity. They're 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 just so loving, and I love that about them. And they're they're both so intelligent. I learned so much from them. Uh, but my hope for them. Uh, is to be better uh, uh, men 
and a better my son to be a better man and my daughter to be a better woman mm. than me and her mom than than, than, than me and her mom are mm. because my wife is just just just, just wonderful. Uh, I may be the head of the house, but I ain't no dummy. I know who's the glue and holds it down. <laughs> I know who holds it together, but she is a a phenomenal woman. Uh, she's gifted. She's a strong, outspoken, uh, a, a, a black woman. She wears her, her faith and her heart on her sleeve. And, and my daughter and my, my son, they, they take uh, uh, so many of their, her wonderful traits uh, from her, and they live them out. Uh, my hope for them is to, uh, is, is to always, is to be loving, uh, uh, loving uh, good citizens. That's one of my, my greatest hope for them, is to be loving good citizens, is, is to be, uh, be, for Jesse, uh, to be a strong black man, uh, uh, to don't accept uh, 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 no because of your color, don't accept uh, to be discriminated. Matter of fact, refuse to be discriminated. Uh, my daughter, uh, bless her heart, she's a double minority, a black woman. I, I, I want her to, to continue to grow and to, to be passionate. I, grew, I want both of them to grow up to be, to be world changers, uh, uh, to not take no's for an answer, uh, uh, to, to, to know that if, if, if God shuts the door, uh, he got a better one open. And if man shuts the door, that God can knock it down. You know, I want them to grow up, uh, to be hopeful, and to grow up to uh, 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 to teach my grandchildren and their grandchildren uh, 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 about about righteousness and, and about the love of God, and that we're all created equal, even that we're even if we're not treated like it. And if we're not treated like it, don't stand for it. To speak up and to speak out. Uh, I, don't, I, I want them to, to grow to, uh, to continue to, to never blend in, <laughs> to be their own people, to be their own persons. Because God, uh, he made us all in his image, but he gave us this great individuality. And, and, and all three of them, all four of us, possess it. But I want them to walk in, in their calling and not daddy's calling. That's the hope that I have for them. Amen. That's the, that's, that is the hope that I have for my children. Well, Pastor Bingham, what a blessing this whole conversation has oh, been. Man. What you just said. Blessing of your family. Yeah, uh, what a Pastor. gift it is that your kids have a dad like you. Your wife God. has a husband like you. To and God be all the glory. That our Hope Community Church has a pastor like you. Man, to God be the glory, man. So I'm grateful this conversation has been, been rich. And yes. Yes, it needed. Has. Thank you for your transparency, your honesty, Welcome, your willingness to welcome share some stories and to talk and to have some conversations and topics that though difficult to talk about necessary i think we both yes. had the heart like hey these are necessary conversations to yes, have they are. And so yes, any they are. closing word that you want to share before i'm going to ask you to close us in prayer okay. but uh if there's any kind of a closing word that you want to leave with the group I want to give you an opportunity to do that thank you uh, eagle church you have a great man of God here. Great man of God here. Uh, I thank God uh, for your heart, man of God, and for your uh, compassion and even being bold enough uh, to do something like this. I think it's needed. Uh, in my prayer, I've been praying that uh, we just don't change our hope in Eagle Church, but I pray that we don't even just change the city or the state but that this conversation would change the world. That's my prayer to God that I sealed in Jesus' name, and I believe that that's going to do it. You said you got Eagle Church uh, campus in Hawaii. <laughs> Look at that reach yeah. right there. So I just thank God, and, uh, and I just want everybody uh, that views this uh, to continue to stand fast uh, in the Lord. Uh, stay on the wall. Don't come down. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. Because I believe that no matter what it looks like, I still know for a fact that Jesus Christ can change hearts. He can. He can open any door. He can shut any door. And then every door that he shut, no man can close. And every door that he closes, no man can shut. Yeah, amen. amen. Would you close this in prayer, brother? Absolutely. Father God, Lord, we thank you today, Lord, for allowing us this time, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for this purpose, Lord, that you 
blessed us with, Father God, that you didn't purpose before the foundation of this world. Lord, we pray, Father God, today that we honored you today, Father God, with our conversation. We thank you, Father God, for the honesty. We thank you, Father God, for letting us be candid. We thank you for even letting us get uncomfortable. Lord, I pray today, Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, for all those that will witness this conversation, will be moved by it, and that everybody that hears this conversation that listens to this taping, Lord, I pray that you will pour your spirit out on each and every one of us, Father God. I pray that you make us better men and women, to make us better fit for service, to do the work that you specifically designed each and one of us to do, individually and collectively. Lord, you are our strength, you are our redeemer, and Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for your patience with us through all these years. We thank you, Father God, for your mercy, we thank you for your grace. And this is in your wonderful name, Jesus, we say and pray. Amen. 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 Brother. My brother. Oh, my friend. Love you, brother. I love you and I do call you friend. Call you friend.